Well, it's, it's interesting because when we say the Cuban community here, uh, m mostly what we all think of, uh, myself included, uh, is, is the, the Cuban exile community in Miami. Um, but what's interesting um, and not is, is, is well known is that, uh, that, that it's a lot more diverse than it publicly appears. Um, uh, Forty percent of the Cubans in the U.S. are actually registered Democrats, but, but you never hear from them. Uh, and a relatively small number of uh, conservative exiled Cubans are in charge of the, you know, pr pretty much run the, the radio stations and control the airwaves uh, in Miami, and a lot of public perception about, about Cuba, uh, as well as uh, American foreign policy toward Cuba. And those, and I'm not saying they're, you know, they don't represent a lot of people, they do. Uh, however, they don't represent everybody, and that's what they purport to do. They, they publicly uh, g uh, go around uh, pretending, really, that, uh, that it's a, a monolithic culture, that everybody's on board with their vision of things, and it really couldn't be further from the truth. And, and uh, I find that, and I kind of devote my, my life, in a way, to comp comp kind of reflecting the complexities of the situation. Um, and in terms of the reception of artists, um, you know, it's it's disgraceful what's happened in Miami, as far as I'm concerned. You know, when there, are, say, a Cuban musical group wants to go to Miami, and then there are there are bomb threats to the to the venue or the theater at which they're they're, they're supposed to appear. This happens still today. Um, a group like Los Van Van, which are the Cuban Beatles, uh, they can't play in Miami. Um, uh, certain you know artists, visual artists, and so on are also. Uh, I mean, unless they publicly disavow uh, Castro's regime, uh, they they are not uh, accept accepted in Miami.